confession and hearing God's words of forgiveness. We begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Most merciful God, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being, forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life eternal. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they. Let us sing our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us remember those who have gone before us from the church militant to the church triumphant and who await our completion in glory. Now the great litany. Those who have died in Christ, who are in Christ, and the Lord who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. Forever. Forever and ever. God, we remember those saints who have gone before us. We lament their passing. And honor their legacy. We give thanks for all we have learned from them. Those who followed the way of Christ faithfully. We follow their example. Those who have made mistakes along the way. We learn from their experience. Those who made progress for peace. We continue their work. Those who lived simply and quietly. We are enlightened by them. Those who gained honor and distinction without pride. We are humbled by them. Those who were martyred for their faith. We commend them to your care. They have finished their work on earth. And Reverberating into our lives now. As the word of Christ lives on. May the peace of Christ continue to inspire us. To good works, humility, simplicity, and peace. As those forebears were inspired by him. To live in grace and love. May we live in their example of faith. Now let us sing together our hymn of praise.
us pray. Beloved God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have drawn all your people into one holy communion. Grant that as we remember the saints who have gone before us, we are strengthened for lives of faithful service to you, so that the world will know your blessed presence. Bring us at last to the feast which has no end, where all will be one. And we pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the kiddos to come forward. I've brought my friend Pirate Pete with me today. Timbers, look at all the mateys I got out here today. Good morning. I have a question. Well, what your question be? Do you have a tood? You know what a tood is? To have a tood. Have you ever heard somebody say you've got attitude? Yes. Oh, that's a short way of saying attitude. That's right. Let me tell you, when you're on a pirate ship, you cannot have a tood with the captain. That's right. All the mateys have to work together. That's right. And if you get a tood, you'll be walking the plank. Oh, that's a little extreme. Well, it's just a swimming pool, actually. Oh, oh. So you're not going to Davy Jones' locker? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, you're you're a, you're a little less harsh pirate. I. All right. Well, that's good. Well, do you think that if you get an attitude against God, that God's going to make you walk the plank? What is God going to do for you? Forgive you. But what do you have to do first before you're forgiven? Pray is one thing. Pray for yourself and pray that you can say, God, I'm sorry for what I did. Because we all do things that make God sad, don't we? Yeah. And we have to go to him and say, I'm sorry, God, for what I did. And God, who is abundant in grace. That's right, Pete. God is abundant. That means he has a lot of love for us. When we say he's abundant in grace and mercy, that means he gives his love to us when we realize in our brain that we did wrong and it made God sad or somebody else sad that God loves. And we come to him and we say, I'm sorry. And he says, okay, but now do better. That's right. When a meaty doesn't do right, he gets to do it again until he gets it right. Uh-huh. So well, the mates on your ship have to do it again and again and again. I. that's the way it's done. Arr. All right. So sometimes we do the same bad thing over and over again. And we go to God and we say, I'm sorry. But what should you try to do? Should you try to do better? Yes. yes, that's what you should do. That's what life is all about. Today, Jesus talks about attitudes, but he talks about beautiful attitudes, the kind of attitudes that we call beatitudes. Can you say beatitudes? Beatitudes. That's right. The beatitudes are things that Jesus said to the people telling them the kinds of heart they have to have. Do you feel things in your heart? Yeah, we all do. When we have a feeling in our heart, we know whether we've done right or done wrong. And when we have a feeling in our heart that is making God smile, that's a beautiful attitude. Amen. Well, thanks for listening. Would you like a fruit snack? Yes, okay. All right.
That sounds good to me, too. Thanks for coming up, kids. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. in triumph. Let them be joyful on their bed. Let the praises of God be in their throat and to their sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings in chains and their Inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory of his faithful people. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and shall be forever. Amen.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. This next statement is from a pagan, a pagan who doesn't believe in our God. You might recognize the name, Socrates, or if you don't know how to pronounce it, Socrates. He said this, the end of life is to be like God, and the soul following God will be like him. Which leads to a story. After a very long and dry sermon, the minister announced that he wished to meet with the church board following the close of the worship service. Well, after service, the pastor was waiting, and the first man to arrive at the meeting was a visitor. And the pastor said, you misunderstood my announcement. This is a meeting of the board. And the visitor replied, I know. And if there is anyone who could be more bored than I am, I'd like to meet him. <laughs> In today's gospel reading, Jesus tells the, cr the crowds a lot of B statements. Is it any wonder that we call these statements the be attitudes? The way we are to be in our attitudes in life. But I want to turn your attention to that second reading today from the epistle of John. In that reading, we learn some very important ideas. In this first letter of John, chapter 3, John writes, uh, as you go down into that reading, uh, and that, that's in verse 2, he writes, we shall be like him. Be like him. Oh, what a relief. I know I'm not like him yet. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be as I ought to be. In fact, every believer ought to be just like Jesus. So that once we have repented of our sin, and remember I have talked about this repeatedly, repent means to change your mind. Amendment of life means to change your direction. So we talk about repenting, but that's just the process of taking out the world's thoughts 
and replacing them with godly thoughts. So we are first to repent, and then the person who trusts in Jesus can be just like him, like Jesus. This means the weight of your sin has been taken away, and that, that huge burden of sin will be taken off your shoulders. And you will be free indeed to be like him. Free to be like Jesus. And it means all those evil influences can be and should be gone. All your doubts should be and can be gone. All your negativity should be and will be gone. All pain and sadness should be and will be gone. And death should be and will be gone. It won't always be immediate, aren't we aware of that? We are aiming ourselves toward eternity. We are aiming our lives to forever. At this point in, in this life, we really have no idea what it means to be like Jesus. Yes, we can read about it. We can uh, intellectualize it. We can even start to practice our lives to be uh, an imitation of Jesus. But even John in his letter admits that this new existence is hard for all people to visualize, to really understand it and to know what it is truly like. But we do know the promise that God cannot lie. God is so holy and so pure and so filled with love, a God that is that kind of God, the only God that there truly is, cannot lie. We have been told through Scripture that we will be changed to be like Him. What a glorious gift this will be. That in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the trumpet, we shall all be changed. What an unexpected gift. It is part of our Heavenly Father's design and desire that we shall be changed. Isn't it odd that the Lord of all the universe wants you, wants me, to be with him. That is God's design. So that you will receive salvation saved from the eternal lake of fire. And to be redeemed and made new. Completely remade into a resurrected being just like Jesus. And it's something you cannot take lightly. You must make a serious effort to take this promise seriously. Knowing that God cannot lie, he takes your sins and mine very seriously. I don't care if it's a small little white lie or if it's capital murder. All sin separates us from God. Because God himself takes all sin deadly seriously. All humans are given a death sentence at birth. We will all die. And when we continue to disobey God's moral law, and you know them as the Ten Commandments, Death is our due for our disobedience. You know the scripture verse, the wages of sin 
is what? Death. You are being paid in death for your disobedience. Now we know in the Old Testament, God tells us that he's going to do away with death. And in the New Testament, the testament of his Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, he tells us how he's going to do it. It's a matter of repentance and trust. Yes, you'll repeat sin. It is in your spiritual DNA. You are going to be sinful until the day you die. But God has a solution for your sin problem and mine. It's repentance to change your mind about continuing in your sins and then turning away from them in amendment of life so that you're not a hypocrite. There are a lot of so-called Christians who have not repented of their sins, who continue in their sins. It, that is not true conversion. If you are a hypocrite, you're doing exactly what people who re refuse to come to church will say. I don't want to go where there's a whole bunch of hypocrites. Knowing that someone who says that is a hypocrite. Truly repenting and trusting in the Lord Jesus allows God to work his will in you. He will, through the Holy Spirit, give you a new heart. And that new heart will no longer want to do those former sins. You will want to live a righteous life. You may not do it perfectly. That's why we continue to have the confession at each worship service. But God wants you to fill your time with good works, love, and thankfulness. You see, the problem we have, at least for most of us, is we really enjoy many of the sins that we do. A lot of them are fun. A lot of them just tantalize us. And we try to minimize the seriousness of those sins. Saying things like, well, everybody does it. Is that going to hold up in a court of law? A human court. Not God's court. Let's talk about a human court. If you go to the judge after committing a heinous crime and you say, well, everybody does it. Is the judge going to listen to that? Of course not. Why would God, the most holy God, the most righteous judge, do any differently than a human judge? There will be a day of reckoning for us all. And it ought to help us to take sin seriously. Well, some of the things that people do to minimize their sin is they invent and visualize a God who is warm and fuzzy, a big teddy bear kind of God. One who just winks at our sins and tells us that we're really okay. But dear friends, that's idolatry. When we try to make up in our own minds a warm and fuzzy God, we're not reading our Bibles. Scripture contradicts the idea that God just passes over sins without true repentance and amendment of life. True seeking of something new rising, dying to sin and rising to new life daily. So we don't want to make an idol because what does that do but transgress 
the very first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. So don't try to invent one of your own. Go to scripture and see the real God. And just because you think that God is not really a God of judgment, just this warm and fuzzy fellow who who just winks at your sin, then you have not really read the Bible fully and completely. You take what a holy and just God has done for you by rejecting all sin and demanding your obedience and basically spit in his eye. You need to mend your ways. And yes, God's grace is free, but it is never cheap. It requires something of you. A response. Not that your works get you to heaven, no. But out of thankfulness and gratitude, your works should flow from you once you hear those words of absolution that say, you are forgiven because of Jesus Christ. So if you have invented a marshmallow God who doesn't punish sin, it doesn't make it true. When you believe in a make-believe God, I can believe that going 70 miles an hour, for instance, in a school zone doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter one bit. I can even pass that school bus that has the red lights blinking. It doesn't matter. But the reality is our justice system says you have broken the law and there are consequences when you do things such as that. And you will be brought to justice. And that is why it is so important for you and to me to take sin seriously and strive to be like him. To continually move away from sin and move in the direction of love gentleness, righteousness, and good works. And this is not an impossibility. Not when you repent and trust in Jesus Christ who will send the Holy Spirit into your heart to give you the power to amend your sinful life. That Holy Spirit will begin building a new heart in you so that you will desire the things of God rather than the things of the world. And that Holy Spirit brings life and rejects sin because we know what the wages are. I don't want to collect my wages, do you? So my dear friends, be like Let us rise to sing our hymn of the day for all your saints. Let's see, we're only doing certain verses. One, two, four, and five.
Let us confess the faith of the church, the faith into which we were baptized. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us approach the throne of God, there to pray for the church, the world, and one another. You may be seated. Thank you, dear Father, for all your saints. Thank you for the ones who shaped our faith and molded our lives. Thank you for the spirit-filled leaders, martyrs, scholars, and pastors who have kept your church one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Thank you for the nameless and forgotten faithful known only to you, whose humble lives are exalted on heaven. Thank you for joining us to Jesus and, to, and so to all your saints, past, present, and future. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, grant that the church may always proclaim your living and holy word to the world. Use it to forgive and transform many sinners into the saints of your church and into beloved children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless, O oh Father, as you have promised those who are persecuted for Jesus' sake. Crown their faithful endurance with his triumphant victory over sin and death, and adorn them with the robes of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving God, touch with goodness the hearts of everyone in this congregation. Make our words and deeds gracious and truthful. Let the light of Jesus shine in all we say and do, so that through us our neighbors will encounter their Savior's love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protecting God, keep our nation safe, strong, and honorable. Give wisdom and prudence to all who hold power and authority in our land. Give each of us the desire and the ability to love justice, do mercy, and walk humbly with you and with each other. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <laughs> Father God, ransom the lives of your servants who are bound by cords of suffering, depression, disease, and confusion. Hear the names of those we lift up with our voices and from the silence of our thoughts. each one a vision of your mercy and grace and to be radiant with hope for their healing and hold us in the name of Jesus Lord in your mercy hear our prayer will the congregation please rise we are now going to read the names of those who have died since last all saints and Sonny Jones, Erlen Milkey, Clifford Bud, Jack Carlisle, Buster.
provident God, with reverence and affection, we remember before you those who have shaped our faith and influenced our lives in godly ways. We entrust to you tender care our beloved dead who are now at rest in you. Thank you for their witness, love, and encouragement. Grant that we may likewise help others, especially the young and those who do not know you, to seek your face and rejoice in their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and graciously grant all our petitions that glorify you and benefits this poor, broken world for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is time for special music and the offering. pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord.
suffered is for all the baptized people in the world who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, and who also believe in his real and true presence in these earthly elements of bread and wine. All these are invited to Christ's table. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the blessedness of your saints, you have given us a glorious pledge of a hope of our calling and moved by their witness and supported by their fellowship we may run and with perseverance the race that is set before us and with them receive the unending crown of glory and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is Lord again. As we remember before you our Lord's sacred passion, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his return to make all things new, we ask you to keep us ever steadfast in him who is your word made flesh and the one who is our eternal truth, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of the Lord be with you always. Share the peace of Christ with those around you.
may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by this holy food you proclaim your death for all people. May the whole world come to believe in your resurrection when we are raised to new lives of love through this holy communion. We bless you now and forever. Amen. ministers. This is the first of the month, and they go out to share this Holy Communion that has been blessed at the altar with those who are homebound and in various situations in life. So now, let us pray. And you can join in with this one. Gracious God, you took the form of a servant, offering yourself as food, comfort, and strength to a sick and hurting world. Anoint with a servant heart those who take your word and sacrament to our sisters and brothers unable to be present with us this day. Grant grace, mercy, healing, and hope to those who feast on your body and blood and receive your word of new life. May we all recognize that we have a place and a home in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, 